Atlantis Rising Research Group, audiobooks. The Magic Mirrors of Dr. D. By J. Douglas Kenyon. The secret of John D.'s spirit mirror has been revealed. Or not. But first, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel and like and share with a friend. Help make us number one in our category. Intended for communication with angels, among other things, a volcanic obsidian black glass mirror, made by Aztecs and brought to Europe after the Spanish conquest, was used by Queen Elizabeth I's esteemed advisor in politics and magic, occultist John D. A new geochemical analysis in the journal Antiquity, while making no claims about the angel part, now documents the authenticity of the strange artifact displayed in the British Museum. The almost perfectly circular obsidian mirror, 7.2 inches in diameter, is polished on both sides. In a practice known as scrying from descrying or crystal gazing, Aztec priests used such mirrors, it was said, to peer into the future. European scrying survived well into the Renaissance, but the Roman Catholic Church declared images appearing in crystal balls were the work of evil spirits and condemned scrying as a black art. The church called its practitioners specularii, heretics, to be punished accordingly. Anyone believing that the mysteries of Dr. D have thus been laid to rest, will be surprised to learn that the case of the legendary polymath slash magus, and his many esoteric tools, including spirit mirrors, remains filled with anomalous revelations that can still leave researchers perplexed and amazed. In his book John D. and the Empire of Angels, author Jason Love documented communications that occurred between 1582 and 1589, involving D., his associate Edward Kelly, and angelic beings. In an excerpt published in Atlantis Rising Magazine No. 132, Love told how, the angels explained the true origins of humanity and delivered the original language spoken by mankind before the fall. D. and his associate Kelly, an itinerant psychic, claimed that this language, along with a mathematically complex system for making further contact with the angels, was to be used by Dee and Kelly to advance the world toward the apocalypse. While such a story might today be dismissed as mere fantasy, in the 16th century it was anything but a fringe event, as evident in the outsized role that John Dee continued to play in history. Alchemist, magician and Christian Kabbalist, Dee is credited with coining the term, British Empire. So impressed by him was the queen that she asked him to examine her astrology for the best time for her coronation. In a highly literate age, Dee's scholarship was unparalleled. His home at Mortlake, indeed, contained more books than any private library in England, as well as a magic mirror that, it was said, would astound all who dared look at their reflection. According to writer Stephen Sora in Atlantis Rising No. 81, Dee was also a spy, and the inspiration for novelist Ian Fleming and his James Bond character. A hotbed of political intrigue, Elizabethan England saw rampant plotting, counter-plotting, assassinations, and threats of war. The Queen understood that keeping her throne meant knowing on whom she could rely. Dee reported only to her and her spymaster Francis Walsingham. Dispatches to Dr. Dee were signed by the Queen as M, just like Bond's boss. Nearly four centuries before Bond's famed code name, D referred to himself as Agent 007. Incidentally, a very important member of the court, the Earl of Leicester, whom D had tutored as a child, used a similar code, marking his secret correspondence with two dots, or two numbers zero s representing eyes. D marked his correspondence to the Queen, for your eyes only. Along with Sir Francis Bacon, D is considered the inspiration for if not the co-founder of, the Rosicrucian Brotherhood. Since the Brotherhood in Dee's time was not yet chartered, it had no established organization or rules, officers, or even members. It was indeed, as claimed, a Brotherhood of Invisibles, and for good reason. To be a visible proponent of any science condemned by the Church could shorten one's life expectancy considerably. Many scholars believe the Rosicrucian Brotherhood played a great part in Dee's performance as Elizabeth's spy. His position as court mystic, connections to the invisibles, and his gifts that seemed almost supernatural, gained him ready access to Europe's esoteric circles. As for magic mirrors, Elizabeth certainly had access to Dee's shoe stone, an egg-shaped crystal ball that Dee said the child angel Uriel had given him in a vision. Gazing into it, claimed Edward Kelly, revealed myriads of angelic spirits. 
It too, apparently, is available to be seen in the British Museum. According to writer John Chambers, in an article for Atlantis Rising No. 81, the use by British monarchs of such magic mirrors goes back to King Rience of North Wales, perennial foe of King Arthur. Merlin the magician was said to have given Rience an enchanted, all-seeing mirror that was round and hollow and like a great globe of glass. Visit AtlantisRising.com for more information.